morning. Well, we're on day four of our devotion. And I felt this morning uh, when I woke up that the Lord had uh, impressed upon my spirit. He said to me, deal with speculations. So I know we touched a little bit on that yesterday about um, in, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, about casting down vain, imagine, uh, vain imaginations. Um, but I want to read that again. And I don't think I'll be too long today. I'm just going to um, go over some things that we spoke on yesterday and maybe add a little more in depth to some of the meanings of words just to bring some clarity. Uh, but this really is something a lot of people struggle with. Uh, a lot of people's warfare is really what goes on in their mind. It's, it's you know, we can we can say we got a devil, and yes, we do. We got enemies, and there's little demons and so forth, and you know, people experience things. And but the the truth of the matter is, the majority of warfare goes on between your mind. If you can conquer what goes on between your mind, between your ears, sorry, I'll tell you, your life will be victorious. Because um, when you become a, a new Christian. You should no longer be thinking as the Gentiles. And we read that, I believe it was on day two, if I remember, about in Ephesians, that think not like in the vanity of, the, of their mind as, as the Gentiles do or the world does. We are new creatures in Christ, amen? Putting on the new, the new man, putting off the old man. This is something we've got to do daily. I've been saved 38 years, I think it is, and I still have to do it. Every morning I wake up, I make a choice. To, to discipline my mind, to, to, to put off the old man and put on the new. There's times, I'll tell you, my flesh rises up, my old carnal nature, depending what circumstances I'm presented with, and my old man wants to deal with it the way my old man would, not the way the new man would. So I have to constantly put off my old man. I mean, it does get easier because you start to uh, identify yourself with Christ and you start to identify yourself with that new nature. And eventually, just those things from the carnal man will just eventually fall away. So um, it, is, it is a daily thing. And so back into 2 Corinthians 10.5, um, starting in 3, he says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Now, I talked about that yesterday. There are weapons we have that are not fleshly, that are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. What are those fortresses? What are those strongholds? It is what you build up in your mind. They are, they are thoughts. They are strongholds that you live your life according to. And that is what uh, you have to learn to tear down. And your, your weapons that are so divinely powerful are the scriptures, the power of the word. And that's why you need to get into the word. That's why I, I strong, I, I'm big on the declaration. I'm big on writing out scriptures and, um, and using them in your prayer time, using them, you know, if you have to, uh, you know, recite them on a daily basis. It's important that you do that till you get it in your spirit. Okay. For we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So this morning I woke up and the Holy Spirit said to me, deal with the speculations. Well, in the, in the uh, King James Version, it says, casting down imaginations. What is an imagination? Well, I did a quick little bit of word study here uh, just to present to you this morning. And uh, an imagination is a reason or a speculation. It is to take inventory. It means to estimate, to conclude, to suppose something, and it is something said. So let's talk about that for a minute. How many of us take inventory on our lives more on the negative side? What we really should do is take inventory on the word, what the word says about us. But many of us take inventory, we reason in our minds, some of us wake up and there's such a battle going on between our ears that, that it's just so overwhelming for some of us that it produces depression and sadness in our lives. And let me tell you, these are the fiery darts I talked about yesterday. These are the things that the enemy has thrown at us, be it through our childhood, right into our adulthood, 
Um, be it through your own worst enemy sometimes yourself. The what you look at when you look in the mirror, what you see, and then what you do is you reason and you take inventory. You got a pimple on your nose, and next thing you know it, you're ugly, and and you know, or you got a few wrinkles appearing, and next thing you know it, you're oh my God, you're you're just your whole life is over, or you put on a few pounds. You know, the thing is, is that we don't value our lives by what we see in the mirror because. The truth of the matter is we're getting old. The truth of the matter is things change in our bodies. Things happen. I don't have a problem with aging. I'm, I'm not going to say that I wouldn't uh, try a little bit of face cream or, you know, to, to make my skin more youthful or pliable or whatever the case may be. But you've got to accept who you are. You've got to love who you are. And again, I'm not saying if you're overweight and you want to better yourself, then lose weight and better yourself. But I'll tell you right now, you could, you could lose 50 to 100 pounds and, and still not see yourself the way God sees you. So the, the, the whole thing is, is dealing with the fortresses, dealing with the strongholds between your mind. There was a time in my life I did not like who I said, and I know I've touched on that, but <clears throat> it was my prison. You know, my own secret prison. Nobody knew what I went through but only myself. And it made me very sick physically. I'm not, I won't get into that, but many of you know my testimony. God healed me of Crohn's disease. And, and Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease. And an autoimmune disease is your cells attacking you. It's you rejecting you. So that's a whole other topic. But anyway, so these casting down imaginations, these, these, uh, uh, reasonings that go on, these things that uh, are built up in our head, in our thoughts, control many lives. And that's where you've got to realize that it's up to you to apply the word to those situations. It's only the word that's divinely powerful. The scriptures are what's going to tear down those strongholds. And you putting in new thoughts, putting in scripture and, and, and promises what the word says about you. Amen. What about finances? How many people struggle with finances? How many people, um, you know, look at their present uh, situation? You know, maybe they feel, oh, my God, you know, I don't have enough money to pay my next bill. And where am I going to get that? And where am I going to get the money for food on my table? Well, next thing you know, you're, you're, you're so engulfed in the, um, in, the, in the thoughts of where your next bread, piece of bread is going to come from. You forget that you're that the Bible says Jehovah Jireh is your provider. And that if he's going to feed the sparrows, the little sparrows, how much more will he look after you? And and what about in, I think it's in Psalms or Proverbs, don't quote, I know it's one of those two books. Um, again, that wasn't part of my message today, but uh, I know it's in there and I can find it for it. The Bible says he gives you power to get wealth. He gives you power to get wealth. You know, so if, if that's the, the, what the scripture says, then focus on scriptures like that and you can do your own word study, whatever it is you're struggling with. Your marriage, maybe you've got a bad marriage and you're just, it's falling apart and, and you're just uh, taking inventory on that and you're looking at the negative and you're not, you're not believing that God can restore your marriage or your relationship. Those are things that you have to cast down, whatever it is. Your future, maybe you feel you don't have a future. Um, and you think your, your future is just going to be, you know, death and, and, and poverty and no career and no merit. Maybe, maybe some of you young ladies out there are feeling you're never going to have a husband. Well, you keep thinking like that and you keep dwelling on that, then there will, no, there will not be a husband. But start confessing and start believing that the Lord has your Prince Charming, amen? Your, your knight in shining armor, as you want to say it. The man who will love you for who you are and accept you for who you are, amen? Because those are the things, Psalm uh, 37, delight thyself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And that could be good. I mean, you got desires that are evil and bad. They'll they'll be handed over to you, just like the Israelites. They were they wanted more manna. They were puking it out of their nostrils. Anyway, back to casting down imaginations. What does it mean to cast down a speculation? What does it mean to cast down those things that you've taken inventory on? It means to demolish with violence. It means by force. It's not going to happen by you sitting mully grubbing every morning over how much weight you've gained or how big the pimple is on the end of your nose or how many wrinkles you got and how old you're getting and how you don't have a future and, 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 and how you just, you know, you don't like yourself. 
Those things are not going to uh, be cast down by you doing that. You've got to take it by force. The violent take it by force, the scripture says. You've got to demolish those thoughts. And you know what? It comes from the Greek meaning. The word casting down comes from the Greek meaning as one crucified. Think about that. What does it mean? So you are crucifying just as Jesus went to the cross and was crucified for every sin, every um, sickness, every disease, every bit of poverty, every bit of uh, lack in our lives. He was crucified for those things. And that he is using that as a, uh, that meaning of that word is being used that we are to crucify, to kill every negative thought, every reasoning, every thing we conclude our lives to be that are, is on the negative side, we are to crucify it. Amen? And so bringing it into captivity, the scripture says, so we are to destroy with force, with tenacity, uh, every thought, every reasoning that comes against us and bringing it into captivity. What does that mean? It means to capture one's mind. It's like taking the enemy in your mind and capturing it and bringing it into obedience, just as we read in verse 5, bringing every thought, capture your mind, and bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. Oh, I can't express enough. And if you don't listen to these words, if you don't heed these words, you will go on struggling. I'm not kidding you. Because the Bible does not lie. God's word does not lie. You have to appropriate the word of God. If you're not reading the word, if it's not your daily bread, if it's not the very thing that you get up and do in the morning, I'm sorry, your life will not be successful. <laughs> That's the bottom truth. I mean, I just can't put it into any simpler words. You know, you just got to apply it to your life. Okay, so the battle this morning is in your mind. It's in between your ears. Let's go to Mark 5. I've got a few scriptures here, and again, I, I just marked some of these down, so what comes out of my mouth today, I did not plan other than what the scriptures are going to be uh, leading me to say. Mark 5. Um, okay, this is, um, they came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gerasians. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with the chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Well, I'll tell you, there is a story to be told right there. If you can see what I see in these scriptures, the word tomb, here was a man, Okay, when Jesus got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs had met him. This word tombs means a recalling of memories. It means to remember, to remind, or to be mindful of. The problem with this man was he lived in the prison of memories. And he was bound by an unclean spirit. And that unclean spirit bound him with such negativity, with such defeat, such torment, such um, in, 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 encampment. Of, uh, he was encamped with, with tormenting thoughts. He was in chains and shackles and, and in prison with all these memories. And that's what happens to a lot of people. They dwell on past memories. They are, we are a new creature. Galatians 2.20 says, let's just go there, Galatians 2.20. Before I say anything else, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So it is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives in me. So those memories, putting off the old man, as I said earlier, and putting on the new man. But here is what happens to a lot of people. They dwell on memories. Oh, I remember when I was a child. And I remember when I was told how I was no good. And I was, would not amount to anything. And that I would be fat all my life. And I would be ugly all my life. That needs to be broke 
If you're dwelling on that, that's a lie from the pit of hell this morning. I'm telling you, if you are a, if you are a Christian this morning, you've given your life to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, those thoughts are from the pit of hell. Those are your memories. And those memories have to come into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. You are a new creature in Christ. And you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you um, are that new creature. And you are everything that Christ says you are. And that's where you've got to do the study. You've got to get into the Word and find out what God says about you. I can't do it for you. I can, I can encourage you here this morning and exhort you, you know, with a few scripture and a few meanings of words, but ultimately you've got to find out what Jesus says about you, amen? we got to talk, uh, I want to talk about letting go of the past, Philippians 3, Philippians 3, uh, 13. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. There you go. Letting go of the past, letting go of the thoughts, letting go of the memories, letting go of the imaginations, the reasoning, the things that go on inside your head. Oh, I just, I hope you're getting this. I really do. I hope this. these words are just... Um, barricading through all those strongholds and making sense to you this morning. Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. You can write these down and study them yourself. Um, I don't believe that, you know, sometimes too many people sit in church and just get spoon-fed. You need to study the word yourself. Isaiah 43, 18. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? Will you? God's asking, will you not be aware of this new thing that he gave you when you gave your life to Jesus? When you said, Father, in, come into my life and, and, and take every sin and every burden. When you did that, are you, are you aware that there's something new living on the inside of you? And it's the word of God. It's Christ dwelling in you, you and him, and you, him and you, and you and him. Amen. Seated with him in heavenly places. Glory to God. Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17. These are just um, really basic scriptures. And um, I'll tell you, if you're struggling with imagination and memories, these are the some of the scriptures you need to get into your spirit. 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. How simple is that? How simple is that? It is a journey. Yes, it is. But listen, you can either make a choice right now and apply these scriptures, study these scriptures, find out who you are in Christ if you don't know. If you are living your Christian walk on past memories and on, on reasonings and on um, imaginations, on things that have been spoken to you that are not good, or things that you even say to yourself, I want you to take inventory of your vocabulary. That's what you need to do. You watch what you say on a daily basis. If the majority of your words are negative and are bad and are against you and against your life and against your future and against your relationship, your children, your whatever it is, then that's where you need to take inventory and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to make some good changes because it starts with you. I can't do it for you. I can only present to you the scriptures. I can only present to you the exhortation and encourage you to do it. The rest is up to you. Amen. Uh, Hebrews 10.17. What does Hebrews 10.17 say? Well, if we, if, if God is not going to remember our sins or our deeds, because that's what it says. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Why should you remember? Why should you remember what you did 10 years ago, 20 years ago? And, and let it um, cause an identification to come on you. That's your past. That's what happened to you before. If you had a bad upbringing and you were abused sexually, emotionally, physically. And I'm not making light of those situations because I know they can be scarring. But what I'm telling you is fight the good fight of faith. Get a hold of the Word of God and what it says about you. And don't let nobody, nobody, even yourself, dictate 
anything to do with your past or with your negative thoughts, but bring them to the obedience of Christ. Amen. God bless you all, and I hope that today's message was encouraging. And, you know, I'd love to hear from some of you. Uh, if it has been encouraging, if you've seen change, if you're following these scriptures, I mean, again, I'm just doing what God has called me to do. And the rest is up to God. I've planted the seed, and he will bring it to fruition. Amen? So God bless you, and I hope uh, you have a prosperous, healthy, blessed day. Okay? See you later.